Monsignor Thomas Kisembo. I was ordained in 1967. Worked as at Wakwari Parish from 1968 to 70. But 70, then I went and taught at Tit College. From Tit College, I went to St. Mary's Seminary for some time as a teacher. Then in 1971, I went to Makere University and graduated in 1974. I went and taught at Nyakasura School for some time. Went back to Makiri for the postgraduate diploma in education. Then I was appointed at St. Leo's College, taught at St. Leo's until 1978. 1979, I went to become a rector of St. Mary's Seminary until 1980. 1985, I went to Notre Dame University came for one year, then came back and was rector of the cathedral, that is parish of Priest of Vilka Parish, until 1994 when I went to Israel. From Israel, I became a parish priest at the town church, commonly known as. Charles Luanga Parish Church in Fort Porto. Then 1996, I worked at the Catholic Secretariat as the national chaplain for the Leite. Then 1999, I went back to Nyakasura School for some time. But 2000, His Excellency, the President of Uganda, appointed me Commissioner for Amnesty Commission where I'm still working as a commissioner. Uh, you might say, well, I have worked and we have forgiven so many rebels, or former rebels, 30,000 in the whole of Uganda. And meanwhile, as a priest, I was a chaplain to Cage Forda. Those are the Catholics from Fort Porto Diocese who stay Kampala, Jinja, and Tebe and elsewhere until last year. No, this year, in fact, when I retired, and I think I'm about to again to go back to football. That is about me. I wouldn't say that I kept myself. It is God has kept me, has his own reasons. Because even I don't say I'm the strongest, but good enough, God had given me good health. Because from 1947, I had never been in a hospital until oh. 2016, when I went for simple examination, but the doctor said I had the diabetes, which I didn't believe, gave me an injection and a pastor, kind of pastor, almost died, I was taken to Zambia, but I managed to survive. And I was not angry with the doctor, because the late Father Binta was in Arizona, told me he went to a hospital, and the lab assistant came out and told him, told the doctor that he was six months pregnant, whereas he was a man and a priest. So these laboratory people can make such mistakes. But I'm okay, I have no problem. I haven't kept myself, God has kept me. Fort Porto was one time part of Mbarara Diocese from 1933. Then 1961, that's when Fort Porto Diocese was created. And the first bishop was Bishop Vincent Mapoli. Holy Cross priest, and then 1972, so it was taken over by Bishop Serapio Magambo. Then 1992, Bishop Kalanda, who was succeeded by Bishop Hirwa 
Robert and then with his auxiliary bishop Joseph Mugenyi Akuli and now Mugirwa is still our current bishop. You see, uh, for the Potro Diocese, when Father Act, the Act was the first Catholic priest to come to Toro. He put or he put his tent. He pitched his tent to say mm. at Kijagara, which is in Butit, near Butit Parish. In Mwenge was told that Mwenge was a great county and they speak a very good language. But then he was advised that in order to spread Christianity has to be near the king. So he went to Kabarole. But he found that the king, Kasagama, had already established Christianity. In fact, Kasagama, King Kasagama, was the first missionary we may say in the Toro. Even before the Protestant white missionaries had come, Kasagama had been in exile in Uganda, had embraced Christianity. He was not yet baptized, but he knew it. And when Captain God went with him to Toro, after he had been declared king of Toro, because you know Kavalega had already uh, overpowered the king of Toro and had already regained Toro back to Bunyoro. But this uh, captain of Gadi, when he went and declared him a king, and he had been the son of the king, King Yaika, who had been uh, the king of Toro, and this Kasagama became a king, immediately decided to start Christianity. He sent for catechists from Uganda. But at first, uh, the people at Namirembe hesitated because there was a kind of gentleman's agreement between the British and the, let's say, the missionaries that Western region should be for Catholics and Eastern region and Central should be for Protestants. So what happened? They hesitated, but the Protestants decided to send their Protestant uh, Protestants Baganda. And the Baganda went and helped started teaching. Now that was 1894. Now they are, that's when the Church of Uganda started to let's say in Now 1918, sorry. 1895, there comes Father to the Catholic. And he went to see Kasagama. Kasagama hesitated, he said, Welcome, but I don't think you'll be able to teach your brand of Christianity. My people have already embraced the Anglican kind of or Protestant kind of Christianity. I don't think anybody is going to be. Because Kasagama feared that if there come Catholics come to his kingdom, there will be religious wars which he had witnessed in Uganda. He didn't want another branch of Christianity. However, he didn't deny him. He simply said, OK, maybe the peasants, whom the Vatoro called the Wairu, might join your church, but I hesitate. So he allowed him and he went to Kijanju, where Viruka is now, and he pitched his tent. He waited for people to come and join his religion, whether he stated. Good enough, he found people around that area, probably in the whole kingdom, had lots of diseases, especially yours, yours, the Sunday. You know, wounds. He managed to treat a number of them. 
and other diseases. Now people joined the Catholics. Not so much because of the faith, but they came in order to be able to be cured. So lots of first the peasants and they built a small hospital around Virka and they managed to see that it was possible that they joined and then they didn't want of course the Catholics to be there. But the king didn't show it openly and still the British and especially that area of Toru wanted there to be kind of freedom of worship. And like in Ankole, the this the this commission in Ankole did not want the Catholics to come there, but in Toru the this commissioner had no problem. So the Catholics started but eventually there came a problem. I call I call it scopus because the king it appeared to the Catholics that he was appointing most of the chiefs were Protestants and the Catholics were sidelined. And most of the jobs were also given to the Protestants. Let me to understand this well. Protestants missionaries also came and joined the Waganda Catechist and so they started the primary, not primary, they used to call it um, elementary schools, like primary schools. Protestants started at Chevambe and eventually they moved to Nyakasura and from there they would go to Udo and get a kind of education and be able to work as clerks and other jobs helping the colonials. The Catholics also started elementary school at Virka and another one at Mutiti. And as they worked at Mutiti and Virka, they too produced the number of students who joined St. Mary's at Kisubi. So they would come and find no jobs. Unless you had a relative in the kingdom, could hardly get a job. But good enough, as we said, the king was humane. He tried to give some Catholics some jobs, but still they were not satisfied. He was not that involved, as it were, but his chiefs, of course, Kasagama started teaching Protestantism to his chiefs. In the Sala chiefs, he told them to open churches in their respective counties. And when they were locating land, the Catholics could hardly get any piece of land. So the Catholics had two major complaints against the kingdom. That was against that they were not get becoming chiefs and that they were not having land. That was, I think, the only major complaint from the Catholics. But the king in the 1920s, I think, after seeing that Catholics were not as bad as he had, had been told, he decided to appoint a Catholic Prime Minister, Mikirwa, Mariko Kaboha. And that kind of is the situation. And the Queen of the Father Act befriended the Queen Mother, Victoria, the mother of Kasagama. And that's how he managed to get land at Virka. The Queen, the, the priest asked the Queen of uh, the King, of course. But the Queen, since they were friends, and uh, the Father Act said, Can you kindly give me a piece of land as big? as a hide or a skin of a bull. The queen smiled. He said, you, you think you are going to build on such a land? He said, okay, I give it to you. Get a land as big as a hide or a skin of a bull. The clever priest for that got a good scissor, cut the bull's skin 
with very thin thread. So he spread out that he measured the land with that uh, kind of thread from Kijanju, we go to Kiegobe, part of Gweri, and Katumba, and all that, he was able to fill it. The queen was amazed. So the king got the land, I mean the, the priest, and built Virka, that's where there is St. Leo's and all these buildings, that's how he got the land. The queen came to love, uh, and all the queen yes, came to love for that. The British did not want to call Kasaga my king, after all they are the ones who had brought him. They wanted to call him a chief. Very often, they would dispute with him. And at one time, you know, being a king, when this uh, British absurd man and another captain called him a simple chief, the king slapped the, 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 the district commission. And he ran into the hills, was hidden by the Bakonj and the Vampa, but he eventually sneaked out and came to ask Fadak what he would do. Fadak told him that he shouldn't, he shouldn't be despised by those people. He advised him to go and see the governor in Entebbe. And uh, he marched the king, marched from Toro, from his palace, up to, uh, to Entebbe. He explained his case. He said, no, that man shouldn't really punch you that way. And uh, when these British went to see the governor to accuse the king, the king had already been there. And that built a kind of trust now, because Fadak, the Catholic priest, had advised the king to go and see the governor. So he eventually he became his uh, permanent advisor. He would go to consult him on how to deal with the British, and whenever he had a problem, he would go and ask this man, uh, this priest, Reverend Fadak, to advise him. So the queen almost became a Catholic, but his son would, had been a staunch Protestant said, no, 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 don't, did it. And so that now the king came to trust the Catholics. He even gave his, some of his sons to become Catholic, like John Wakatale, Prince John Wakatale, and then I do, I, I'm sorry to bring myself in the picture. My mother happened also to be a relative of the king. So the king had uh, allowed her to come and join the Catholics. And then there's also another aunt of mine, Sister Paulina. He gave, uh, was a pro she was a protest, said, no, join the Catholics. So Kasagama gave some of his relatives, close relatives, to the, the Catholic Church. In fact, he gave them to Father Bonso now. Father had already died. Uh, uh, Sister Paulina used to march from Virka to Buanda, because by then there were no but all sisters. No, no one was there and you novitiate know, for sisters. They would march to come to Buanda and massacre and become sisters. She died, I can say recently, when she was in her nineties. My mother also became a Catholic. And then Wakatali became a Catholic. So now that kind of bias died down. And the Catholics and the Protestants started working together. A good number of Catholics also became chiefs. And well, they also started getting land. Good enough, I can say in Toro. There were no very serious religious wars like in Buganda. That helped us up to now, and I will speak a little bit about it. So much as Kasagama, unfortunately, 
uh, he had a wife for queen, and that queen would, could hardly give birth. And Kasagama had also his sister called Bagaya, not Elizabeth Bagaya, but Bagaya, the daughter of Nyaika, the, of the form the, the father of Kasagama. This lady, may I call her, Bagaya advised the king to marry other wives. But the king so said, no, I'm the one who brought Christianity. And he told, how can I marry now, second wife? But this Bagaya told, asked Kasagama, he said, are you better than King David? Are you better than King Solomon? Those who are friends of all God, and yet they had lots of wives. Who are you? Eventually, he said these Europeans, you know, they are deceiving you. Eventually, Kasagama took other wives. Because he had given birth, his official queen had given birth to only two children. Nikidi and Ruth Komutari. And they were weaklings. So he, he decided also to marry. But then the Protestants, priests, refused him Holy Communion. Would line up and they would sideline him. He got very mad. He decided to leave Fort Porto. He went to Mwenge, Katoke, built another palace, and he asked. King soon of Uganda to come and open it. But since now he has that antagonized himself with the, the white missionaries and the British, when uh, soon a king soon reached the boundary of Tor and Uganda, he found soldiers. They refused him to enter. And when they refused him, news came to Kasagama. Kasagama said, No, this is impossible. He asked for his nice robes, the best robes. He went to his bed and died. Oh. That was a sad story about the one who had planted religion, Protestant brand in a toro, and who had tried now to take away misunderstandings between Catholics and priests. Then Kasagama was succeeded by King George Rukidi. Now George Rukidi didn't go against the Catholics. There wasn't that pronounced. But because the chiefs, as I said, had been pro the prominent chiefs who were Protestants, they always tried to misguide Rukidi. For example, 1960s, just before independence, um, we had a prime minister, Rusoke, and by then there was what they called the Catholic Council. The Catholic Council members, most of them had joined the DP, now we are coming to the modern politics. And Rusoke and the, most of the Protestants were uh, UPC. So now, and the Vakonji and the Vamba were also now agitating to break off. And again, the reason, again, because of the Katikilo, that one, on one day, when they were in a meeting on the parliament of Toro, they brought to Kuru of Toro, Katikilo said that to become a prime minister you must be a Mutoro Kaswa. Meaning you shouldn't be a Mukonjo or a Mwamba or Muganda for that matter. And this didn't go well with the Bamba and Wakonjo representatives. They much they said why? One of them said the Toro Kingdom is big is standing on three stones like a cooking pot. You have the Vatoro, Vamba, and Vakonjo. How can you say that you are going to refuse the other two? How will you afford to cook? So they marched out 
in mass the wamba and wakonjo and started the Rwenzuru movement. Now this Katikiro, don't think I'm offline, they told and with the, some people went and told Mukindi that they were the Catholics are siding with the Wamba and Bakonjo. And started now also kind of persecuting uh, those Catholics. But Mukindi didn't believe him. He refused. In fact, he invited Benedict to Wanuka. Because when they were in Lancaster, uh, what can we say? They said discussing about the independence of Uganda. The whole kingdom wanted to have federal status. And, and uh, Uganda got it, but then Toro, they want to give, the, to give them kind of uh, semi federal. The one who called the DP side you know, supported the Watoro. And when they came back, the king said, no, no, now my kingdom should vote for DP. So, of course, was left out. We had a very prominent Catholic, and he died a Catholic, John Bavia, was U, uh, UPC staunch. And uh, now, all this problem came up, but still, the Vator voted for DP. Incidentally, also, the Wamba Bakonjo also voted for DP. All that did go well with some of the, the Protestants. Because even some Protestants joined DP, like Vicent Wamaro uh, and others. So we can't say that the king was against Catholics, but some of the, his chiefs were the ones trying to mislead him. And then Rukid decided that every first January of the month, he would pray at Vilka to get a blessing. And that also shows you the relationship between the Catholics and the Protestants, you can't the kingdom. You can hardly say that the kingdom was against no, uh, the, uh, the Catholic Church, nor even now, as I said, even during the independence struggles, when other places, let's say UPC and DP, were killing each other, in the total we never had that incident. DP, you can't say certain Catholic was killed by a PC man, or a certain uh, Protestant was killed by a, a Catholic DP. That relationship, I can say, between the kingdom and the church, the Catholic church, was not that, has never been as bitter as in Uganda, where there was waging war, they had to divide, for example, massacre of Budo to become Catholic, and then uh, he had to become Protestant. And another, let's say, you take in Ankole, where they couldn't see eye to eye, Catholic and the Protestant. And they used to say, Nakole, no shomechyo, that was for Catholics. And no nishomechyo, that is for the Protestants. As I said, our relationship was not that bad. The only complaint, as I said, was made in jobs, give the dispensing of giving jobs uh, in the kingdom and land at first, but all that died out. King Kid was uh, succeeded by Patrick Kavoyo. Uh, Patrick Kavoyo ruled for a short time, because that was 19, I think, 66, but then uh, after a short time, Obote produced pigeon constitution, which abolished all the kingdoms. So poor king, into, he went into exile in London. He had also helped uh, the fighters, or the freedom fighters, 
then. And uh, it said that when he comes to the well, hope his kingdom will be uh, established. But when he came back, it was not as easy as that. Because during the constitutional, uh, the committee of commission preparing uh, this, the constitution, constitutional commission, Toro adopted not to have kingdoms uh, let's say restored. Out of that 29, not LOCs, but uh, we call them, let's say, chairman of UPC at that time and, and the country. Although the country had been, uh, was, uh, many of them had come in. I call them LOCs, uh, RCs, I think, that they were called RCs at that time. 29. Only five had said the kingdom should be restored. Others had said no. And the Toro District Council had also overwhelmingly said the kingdom should it be uh, returned. The chairman at one time invited some old people. He was included among them, were about 45. He told us we shouldn't agitate for the restoration of the kingdom. But we said no, we are. So we went and told the king, and the same chairman and his uh, executive went and told Kaboyo not try to fight for the restoration of his kingdom. In fact, they told him that if abdicated and said he does, he's not interested. They would talk to the president to give him the Jewish job. He didn't answer them. He just went back to his bed, to his uh, room. And so when we went to him, we told him to be calm. And uh, we started making meetings. The king tried to visit people's different places, but the RDC by then stopped him to, from using public places. And he came to Virka. And after consulting his Lordship Bishop Kalanda, I, I gave him permission, I was the Vicar General by then, I gave him permission to use Macaulay Hall. So people who were interested in the kingdom came we used to discuss the Macaulay Hall. And the, the king got a concept paper. He read it to, to us, there were about 92 people from different areas in Toro in that hall. And Bishop Kamani, the Church of Uganda Bishop, and myself, sorry to speak about myself, we moved a motion that the paper agitating for the restoration of the kingdom should be uh, adopted by the whole group. And they did. And then the Reverend uh, Lovis, who was the speak, kind of speak, of course, not officially, and the Clovis Kialimpa, Apuli, and Kaboyo went to see the president. They read him the paper, and the, king, the president himself was uh, impressed. He sent it to the, commission, the committee or the commission, constitutional commission, and they adopted it. And then, after, if you read their reports, the commission, of, uh, the report of uh, the constitutional commission, they said that all had, mm, the majority had refused the kingdom, but due to the proposals given by elders, then they said, well, if the people want, it could be considered. Thus, the kingdom was restored, and the king, and even uh, the president came and said, now the kingdom can be restored. He was the guest of honor, and the king was very happy. And the thanksgiving, he came to Virka for thanksgiving for the restoration of the kingdom. 
and unfortunately he died also and now we have a new king king oyo nyumba kabamba ikuru of whom i was happy to be his regent for seven years and he too it is too early to judge how to the relationship will be between the kingdom and the Catholic Church. But from the uh, what you can see now, as we say, where began is half done. Mm. And the way it has been dealing with the Catholics, we haven't seen any bad temper or any ad Thing that is dividing the kingdom from the good relationship which has who, which has been existing for all this time. Experiences. Well, may I say one experience I have seen. The lady has taken much interest in helping and you know in the church matters it is no more now clear for many lay people are very involved in church matters that is one b the religious now we have the congregation of the banya teresa sisters or sisters of Teresa, the child jesus and then we have St. Joseph's brothers who are so increasing, who didn't exist um, before. These were founded by Bishop Serapio Magambo. Another good experience is about priests. When I was ordained, there were only 13 African priests. But now I think there are more than 100. So that is a uh, as uh, I'm counting my years and saying why I think I'm happy, I'm giving very happy experience that the church is on it. It's not withering but it's growing. Well, mm. as I said, I, I forgot, I talked about the later. Mm. There is a movement, let's say, back I saw, um, guild, let's call it a guild. Now I would say, let us embrace and have that spirit of the Uganda martyrs who are fearless. Even when there came persecution and the missionaries were about to be killed and they ran to Tanzania and yet the late was able those are Uganda matters, to continue preaching the religion. In fact, when they came back, they didn't have much to teach. They started baptizing. I would say that the lay the people, should work hand in hand and their families. The message I would like to leave on this feast, the families should be able to have that Catholic spirit in their own home. Christian starts in the home, not in the Catholic and not in the building where there is a huge church. We call that triumphalism, being triumphant. We have a huge church, beautiful. No, let it start in your home. In the church, the faith should be in your home. So that is, I think, the message I'm telling, especially the later. And the priest sisters and religious brothers should try to instill that spirit to the people that religion starts with me, my family, and then spreads not from up but from down. I also have a book I've written. You know, people should we should glory in our jobs, in our vocations, but we should never despise a vocation. They say we should, the brothers shouldn't despise sisters, and the sisters shouldn't despise the, the priests and the... But should work as a team, work as a team, and be happy, and never be discouraged. Never be discouraged. 
And uh, maybe I would sing a song here, let me see. Unfortunately, it is not that Catholic, but uh, it is uh, a song of the school where I taught Nyakasura. Let the spirits of that be to us a true reward. Let us have indeed as brothers as disciples of the Lord. Thank you, Monsignor. <laughs>